That's for a different game. This is for Dungeon Munches. Part 3, probably the end of it after all, looks to be we're in the final chapter here. Chapter 3, we've done, uh, done what was honestly an overstayed part of the big lab level and a massive difficulty spike. But surely games are known for getting a lot easier towards the very end. So let's bring our zombie butt over here and finish the fight. Hopefully, well, I have no intention of not beating this game tonight, whatever, uh, come whatever may. And I think we already saw through this? Probably, and it didn't make much sense to me then, and I doubt it'll make much sense to me again now. Yeah, here we go. World has gone to hell, and things have become sentient, and I'm still not all that sure why things became sentient. But at least we know the world has gone to hell because the sun suddenly became sentient or suddenly revealed that it was sentient and just said oh yeah I'm, I'm leaving I know you're all gonna freeze and die but you know too bad I gotta think about me and you gotta have a bit of respect for anyone that is focusing on number one so what have we got here well god knows our chef friend Simmer had her all is lost moment and then came back to us When's our all is lost moment? RPG is coming in and just saying hello, well welcome. And this game isn't letting up on being strange though. As I said and said often at the time, I really enjoyed the tone shift that the game did at the start of chapter 2 or the end of chapter 1. And I think I would have loved this game if it had stuck with that. Well, maybe not loved. But this game just loves jumping into 5th gear and then reverse and then 5th gear, fifth gear again. Switching between morbid and comic does make it a little hard to follow and a little hard to swallow. Smafati Singh, can't wait for Nancy Drew this week. Yeah, I don't know what past Jake was thinking, but he put Nancy Drew into the schedule. It's because he saw that it was Good Friday and thought, Good Friday? Hmm, I guess I'll put Nancy Drew in there. I think that's as far as the thinking went. And I was given a very compelling argument to make sure that the game that is done is The Secrets of Shadow Ranch because it was hard to think of any tenuous link between Easter and Nancy Drew. Anyway, sorry, Dungeon Munch is talking over you whilst thinking about Nancy Drew. But what can I say, Nancy Drew is easier to follow than this game. I love your gameplay on YouTube. Why, thank you, RPG. I also love my gameplay. After all, I play and stream the kind of things that I want to enjoy. I even watch my own streams, as narcissistic as that may sound. I was wondering if we were going to get a new set of recipes. I've got a weird drone down here. Does that mean... Okay, I thought there might be a third tab here. In a sense, I hope that there would not be... Oh, but there is. There we go. Much shorter than the others, so that probably attests to chapter 3 being the shorter one, but we shall see. There's not actually anything that I can make here yet. I need blueprints and notes and whatnot. And our portal has changed up again. Never mind that though, let's uh, immediately fall on spikes and go... Christ! Right, there we go. I was hoping that I'd still be able to summon my ice bird. I really enjoy it in games in general, just having NPC counterparts fills me with joy. You know, not to constantly talk about how good Dragon's Dogma 2 is, but that game would not be the game it is for me if it weren't for having the pawns. Oh, they might infuriate me at times. They might infuriate me at all times. But I do love those pawns. And those pawns, well, they are forced to love me. <laughs> they have no choice in the matter. Which makes it all the better that I've made my arisen the ugliest 
fattest bastard that I could muster with character creator. Funny seeing all these other uh, people put in their pawns and they are just like, I assume they're perfect waifu material. All very skimpily dressed. And that made me sad because I couldn't find good and skimpy armor for fat bastard Arisen. I hope this game can forgive me for talking over it uh, about a, another better game, but what can I say? There's not much to this. Aside from the difficulty spike bosses that we faced towards the end of chapter 2, this game has had fairly brain-dead combat. But isn't that just the way of Metroidvanias? Has anybody played a Metroidvania that doesn't have brain-dead combat for non-boss enemies? I'm not well accomplished in the genre, but I'm hard-pressed to think of a situation. Now here we go, and you think, holy blood, it's not of this world. Why did you model me in DD2? <laughs> Come on, I'm sure you've got more teeth than my man Jock Dongle. And the build that I made for taking out Spooky seems to be working just fine for the common foe. I don't know what all these things I'm picking up are though, but I'm sure it ill matters. After all, we still get our healing back from all those things there. Oh yeah, maybe Actro is the rent boy. I'm surprised that name flies. I would have thought Capcom sensors would have come for me. Alright, here we go. Get, let's get that rich lore, because I am actually quite curious about how things turned out the way they did in this game. So we know that the sun was abandoned, eternal darkness... Lighting us, sacrificed minds and bodies to sustain the home. Is that what all these poor sods are in the background, Matrix style? Yes, I did watch the Matrix. There was only one of them, right? So for whatever reason, our friends abandoned us, sent us alone into the abyss here. Hollow Knight has some nasty bosses, even if you upgrade... Yeah, I'm not talking about bosses, of course. I just mean the regular combat you see outside of it. Uh, outside of bosses. Oh, first chapter recipes can be upgraded. Ah, crumbs. Clearly I missed that. Although I seem to be doing just fine with the setup that I have right now. When I meet another power spike boss and that changes, I'll have to look back and reconsider. Let's have a look at that at least. Yeah, here we go. I was wondering why I could only upgrade Grill's recipes, but now we can do these. And as it happens, I do use quite a few of these. Oh, but I can't upgrade you. Can, however, upgrade you. I'm not using an axe or a hatchet, but I... Hmm. I'll upgrade you once, and that's just such a funny-looking image here. If I upgrade you again... Yeah, it's not upgrading my max health, which is what I really wanted. How about you? Yeah, there we go. Okay, not the cost. It's become super fast as well. Boy, this is a pretty big, uh, big boost. Hmm. I could also have more wasps join me. I do like the wasps. There we go. Wow, these are some powerful upgrades, though. What about the ones that I have on you? Already maxed and... Yeah, let's also shoot absurdly quickly. There we go. Used up pretty much all of the light bulbs that I found throughout the entire game. 
But surely this setup of mine will be nigh unstoppable. Look at how fast we are now. Hmm, a very quick bow. And it's a primary, so no thank you. I can't, perchance, upgrade weapons, can I? Sadly not. I'll miss my absurdly loud gun. Imagine how much louder it could be. That does actually sound like hell. I could only scream inside my head and no one would hear. Still haven't really understood who this putrid is or where they came from. Or why everyone seems to be so happy when they get infected with putrid. Oh yeah, there we go. If I could just have a main weapon that's also a firearm and go fully in for upgrading firearms, that would be the dream right there. As it stands, I'll have to make do with being really fast with one gun. Also, it would be a shame to lose my snowbird compatriot. Easy money. Did you ever stream Hollow Knight? I had a weekly one-shot for Hollow Knight. I was actually dismayed by how easy the game was. I had been told so often about how, uh, how great and difficult it was, but I cleared the challenge with nary a scratch. But of course all the Hollow Knight apologists were telling me, ah, well, I didn't do a real challenge, no, I should do the Pantheon and whatnot, and yeah, I'm not really interested. I came, I saw, I conquered, and then I moved on. That said, I do not have a lot of love for Metroidvanias in general. Just something about the formula of Metroidvania that turns me off. I think it's all the backtracking. The few games that could be called Metroidvanias that I've enjoyed have largely had very limited backtracking. Take this game, for example. It's a very light Metroidvania. But the only backtracking you do is just if you need more ingredients. I can only think of one situation where we've unlocked an ability to get to somewhere that we weren't previously able to get to. And of course, the the original of it all, Super Metroid. I abhor that game. I would never dare to call it a bad game. By many metrics, it's a brilliant game. Controls really well. It's huge. Looks and sounds amazing for 1990. Two, was it? Don't know, trying to remember. I had that game when it came out. 1992 feels a little early though. 93? Four feels too late. Oh, but note, Thagnus is there to tell me that I'm completely wrong. It was 1994. I remember it coming in this huge cardboard box. And it had a strategy guide with it as well. There we go. Still remaining brain dead. I can't believe how much of a power jump it was fighting Simmer earlier on. Simmer, who I struggle not to call 
Spooky, because uh, ever since somebody pointed out that she looks like Spooky from Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, cannot help but think that yeah, it is Spooky. Spooky after she's lost the plot. There was another great game, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. Laser Rifle. Primary Weapon. Let me test this out. Hits real fast. Melee damage. So I got a choice now. Do I go full in on gun or melee? And the answer is gun, of course. So what else can we do to augment our gun firing capabilities? I could even let go of that max health if it means that I could grab something that makes me shoot better. Uh, actually, this melee shield is now useless to me. And you could be useless to me. What would I want? Yeah, more DACA, more better is what we're thinking about. Fire and exhaust a bullet every shot. Now, this sounds cool, but the huge problem is that it scatters my shots. And because of the reload time, I'm not convinced that it really enhances DPS. I really don't like the scatter shot on that, though. Uh, is there anything that synergizes with shooting? All damage up. Increase all damage taken by what looks like a flat amount as well, so that doesn't sound great, but imagine, imagine the damage output. Mm. You know what, let's lean into that, shall we? <laughs> oh, it's a different image when it's an upgrade with grill, that's cute. As morbid as this game is, it is very cute. Should be a term for that. Creepy cute or something like that. Which is exactly what Spooky's jump scare was not. Holy moly, look at that! Unlimited power. I'm not really sure I'd call this living simmer. Ah, well that explains a wee bit. I was wondering how the whole place seemed to be running just fine. It's not like everything is frozen, there are functioning lights and even trains. And it really is the Matrix here. Did it ever make sense? I mean, how were, how were people meant to power the Matrix? Because the people need to be fed. No, the Matrix never made sense. Okay, well. Maybe it's one of those turn your brain off movies. That's been a long time since I've seen it. It was just there for the fun fight scenes, really. Back then it was cool and novel. That's known to happen, Gussie, every now and then. Good grief, that DACA. Okay, this is what we're here for.
It is a tad regrettable though that I can't shoot through the walls and floors and such. I seem to recall that I had an ability or a weapon that could, but I'll make do. Ghost in the shell, I actually did watch that. I'm not one for watching things in general, certainly not anime. But I lived with a guy that was a fairly big fan of Ghost in the Shell, so we watched it together, although for him it was a rewatch. And you know what? I enjoyed it. Not enjoying this huge extra damage that I'm taking, though. I guess I wasn't expecting to suddenly fight enemies that would counter my projectile spam with spam of their own. Gosh, the damage output of this. I'd like to have a refight with Spooky with this setup. Although that's rhetorical, she'd probably still kick my ass. That was a hard one fight. If for some reason you're watching this on YouTube, maybe that fight was just 20 minutes ago for you, but for me it was like 30 hours of Dragon's Dogma ago. Maybe more. Feels so good. Oh, well that doesn't feel so good. Down we go. Feels so good to find a game that you love so much. Just everything else falls away. I wonder if I could just ignore all these people. Ooh, yeah, probably not. But what if I could anyway? Maybe not by taking wrong turns. Ooh. Oh, right, but there is a rubbish bin right down there. So, what we do is we just power on through. We're a zombie after all. We can take it. And give me that, and down you all go. Ah. Uh. See, easy brain dead game. Phew. Mm, no game, you cannot tempt me away from the DACA. Not right now. Holy blood, soul remains, sacred blood. It's all very grim stuff now. And I like it. Seems enemies have realized they just cannot defeat me playing fair and square. Now they're just going to teleport behind me. Well, that's fine. No! No! <laughs> enemies can still move during cutscenes. Tragic fate. Save me from myself. Just 
look at this imagery. That is great. It kind of reminds me of that game Blasphemy. Blasphemy? Blasphemous? I think that was also a Metroidvania. I didn't take to it, though. been a little too true to life for that streaming stuff content. Still don't know what's giving me that really beefy looking arm that I have. It'll be one of my upgrades, surely. Oh heavens no, Voomer, we've become the Matrix now. People are suspended in pods, powering the city. Ah, see, here we go. Person is anchored inside, and their soul is extracted. Their energy is turned... their soul is turned into energy. Fed by nutrition... yeah, crikey, it really is. Once they're fed, soul regenerates, cycle repeats, da 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 kept constantly awake. Now that doesn't sound fun. I love to sleep. Sometimes to the detriment of the stream. After this war of mine, I'm dangerously close to a dictator, says Baron Vono, and I have to ponder what I choose. Well, don't make it more of this war of mine. That game was bad. And I don't even mean that as a, I didn't like it. I think it was a bad game. Then again, wasn't it something that roommates said was really good? I, I lose track of names, but roommate became friendly computer, right? Also keep in mind that when you make a dictator, you make it more expensive for everybody else. Fill the bottomless hole over and over again. Leave empty, vulnerable, life. This is all very heavy for a game that's meant to be about fun and funny cooking. this mysterious other person. Is it us? I don't think we've yet found our own identity. Or if we have, then it went right over my head, as most things tend to. Okay, I thought we might be putrid, but maybe not. I'm trying to make sense of this game now. That's the non-stop living and thinking torture.
Oh well, good for Ping. He found his way out. I'm glad they left the kitchens down here for us though. I was told that I can't kill the thing, but maybe with enough DACA. I made the comparison before and I'll make it again between this and Kings of Power 4 billion percent. Okay, maybe I really do just need to get out of here. The game just looks so good. I'll never be able to fault it on that. That's it, 2,400 damage? Okay, alright, maybe I do just need to beat a hasty getaway. I do think all this brutal darkness would be that bit more impactful. If we didn't have all the happy-go-lucky joking about. Explain why this whole place looked like an obstacle course on my way in, though.
I think most of us have, Franco. There's one person around that seems to really like the game and know what's going on. But I'm glad that they're keeping Mom on the spoilers. And welcome, Nuke. Definitely gonna have to look into other games by this developer, assuming this isn't their first one. Because whilst it might be weird and indecipherable, and honestly the gameplay is a bit bleh. And they definitely had some kind of message they wanted to share, even if it's lost on me. Plus the game looks gorgeous. Sometimes a game's art is so good that that alone brings you over. It's like Slime Rancher. Slime Rancher's lead artist, if I recall, is Ian McConville? Uh, artist behind the Mac Hall comics. That might be a blast for the pa uh, from the past for most, certainly is for me. Slime Rancher was another weird and interesting game, but I was there for the art. Yeah, Slime Rancher 2 is stuck in EA hell. Why? Why did it even need EA? I assume they had a successful enough first game release. Can't stand EA. However you interpret EA to be. Right, certainly feeling very fragile with this flat damage booster thing. It might really not be worth what it's doing for me. Because I don't think that damage increase is being reduced by... The Panna Cotta. Maybe we should keep a closer eye on it. Ninjin says, whoever translated this needs some kind of award. Is that a quote from somewhere? Windows 10 blue screen looks like in Chinese. And so review quotes as as I recall the review percentage for this game is quite high. Very high even. Oh yeah, Roscoe, you're dead, right? Like 95% of what I play, I enjoy it as much, if not more, to be streaming it, but every so often there's a game that I know is better enjoyed in my own time. And it's uh, not just the anime titty games. If we're counting that, then maybe it's more like 70%. The quantum block chain light beam.
What the hell is going on? <laughs> damage this DAC is supposedly doing. It doesn't look so high. Where's the damage I'm taking? It's still disturbing. going to have to drop that damage booster. It's getting me killed here in a prolonged fight. Wait, hang on. Where can I even switch out my upgrades? There we go. Mm, goodbye to you. Forbidden dessert. What can I even have that still helps me, though? Hmm, I don't do melee. There is something that gives me a wall against projectiles. Oh, there's also just straight up health. Was it not a very early one that I got? A small water shield prevents projectiles. I think I need that. Give it to me. And let's get it super powered up. There we go. Now, come what may, we're fine. And, and that's the thing about it, Roskill. It really feels like an adventure. In fact, the weakest parts of the entire experience have been any time I've had a quest. The quest design in the game's terrible. The mainline quests, probably the worst. They're all just fetch quests. And they're very often, oh, go to this place, then go back from whence you came, and then go back to the place we told you to go first time. Over and over again. Oh, goodness. The game also does not react very well to you having been to a place beforehand. I made my own way into Batal. And then aeons later, I get the quest line that takes me there, and he's like, Oh, so this is Batal! It's your first time here, right? So here's some info, and here's a permit. You'll need this. I, d I didn't need it for the past 20 hours that I've been here, but okay. Then again, it's doubtlessly no small undertaking to have these kinds of games that have something to apply regardless what you've done. made the floor disappear there. Oh, I see it. It glows red.
Okay, maybe we can just wait this one out. This is rather nice. Easy money. The not Teletubby is down. Don't you like fetch quests that send you across the world? Then find someone that's gone elsewhere without a hint as to where and then go back to other locations. That's probably the reason I shy away from games like Oblivion and Morrowind. Although more often it's the god-awful gameplay. And the terrible fighting system. At least Dragon's Dogma doesn't have that problem. It's like light monster hunter. Very light. Oh yeah, the, the sneak into castle missions. The same castle that you can just walk into any other time and it's no problem. Ah. Yeah, just about every criticism I have in the game is the quests. Everything else is great. I thought we were meant to be more sad about Uncle Z dying. I don't know, I have a feeling he'll be back. Uncles never stay dead in these games. Just ask the Legend of Zelda uncle. Actually, does he come back to life? I forget if that was an ending in the randomizer or in the base game. Also, Roscoe Monster Hunter Wilds soon. I skipped Rise, and I feel pretty good about having skipped Rise. I won't be skipping Wilds. You find a game that's optimized for Switch, you back away from it. That poor Switch. 
Why did I buy that thing? It cost me like 200 quid. Well, Warrior Wear Get It Together was pretty good. The trains here look like the Taipei subway cars. I'm starting to get the references now. I imagine this game is full of stuff that you have to be Chinese to understand. In jokes and the like. I am not Chinese, nor have I even been to China. But we've got plenty of people here that are uh, xenophiles. Probably have plenty of xenophobes too. I enjoyed Rise because I'm a Mon Hun artist, but now that I have distance from it, I recognize it as an inferior game. Ha <laughs> ho! Oh. oh, Roscoe. Now, if you've been playing Monster Hunter since the very first game on the PS2, perhaps you would have had the power to see an inferior Monster Hunter. But you need a wide range of experience for that. You need to have played Freedom Wars to unlock this power. Oh man, still remembering how much my hand turned to mush playing Freedom Wars. What a mashing heavy game that was. Excellent otherwise, though. Okay, as I have been reading this despite talking over it, and I still don't understand what is going on here. We're busy playing the pronoun game. Yeah, that's the trouble with Capcom. They're making some... Uh, infuriatingly retarded decisions in many ways, but they're making some damn good games. I hate De Nuvo and I disagree with their stance on mods, but man, do they make some good games. I also disagree with where they're taking Resident Evil, but uh, I'm sure give it a few more Resident Evils, they'll switch up the formula entirely again, and then it'll either be amazing or terrible. Maybe they'll finally have the balls to redo Code Veronica X. the Resident Evil JRPG. That was Gaiden. And I enjoyed Gaiden. It was awful. And the game crashed on me right at the end, deleting the save file. It was a terrible game, but uh, I enjoyed it. I would, I would have liked to have seen these people do anything. We're just being told about what they've done off-screen. Doesn't lend a lot of weight to what they're doing, which is fine for a comedic game. But this game keeps switching back and forth. Does it want to jerk your tears, creep you out, disgust you, or make you laugh? It really is a game that wants everything. It doesn't have to be enjoyed, but it should be admired. And like I said, I need to look into who developed this game and published this game. The game doesn't have to be good to be interesting after all. The be yeah, just seeing that, that is from... Oh, crikes, which one is it? It's that awful first-person shooting resi, isn't it? And that's the, the clip with the rocket hitting the tyrant. Mm, Survivor, thank you. I think I also ran Survivor and Survivor 2. It's a fun thing about Resident Evil. There are so many Resident Evil games and they, they differ so much in quality. Some of the games being some of the most influential games around, like Resident Evil 4, and some of them just being absolute gutter trash like Gaiden Survivor. Q 
future to lose CO2, nutrition cakes, water supply, and the internet. Oh gosh. That would get most of Western civilization in one fell swoop. I think between me, Lucky, Calum, and Tanda, we have now played every Resident Evil game there is. We need to go and update our uh, our rankings on each of them. Alright, by the music it sounds like we've entered the Egypt level. Every game needs one. Multiple stomachs. Oh my god, we could have done with this at the very start of the game. I was begrudging the game's lack of loadouts, because if you change your weapon, you want to change out pretty much everything you're using. And now, at long last, we don't have to. Oh no, not this again, says Ali. Oh well, back to the FTL VODs. Uh, into the airlock really was something. Hey, the, the combi dishes now. So we do get another one. I'm keen to check those out. We got... I wouldn't mind dropping the jelly, and I wouldn't mind dropping the soy milk, because that damage upgrade does little for me. Scorpion, tail hook, pickaxe, no. Daka. Daka does me just fine. Wait, why was on fire? Could it be that the carpet is lava? Oh yeah, yeah, see I start smoking standing on this thing. I got you. strange game. You don't usually have the Egypt-themed levels so late into a run. The floor is lava, yeah, but I've been listening to Dwayne and Brando lately, so the carpet is lava. music in general, but there was a musical duo I could get behind. I wonder if this has changed quite a bit on harder mode, but I feel like my terrible plays do not get punished enough in this game. If this were even, say, Super Metroid, death can be quite the setback. Depends on your last restore point and how much you want to keep playing Super Metroid. Hmm. Protein powder, time to get swole. I've done a lot of lifting for a long time, but I've never used protein powders, never really seen the point. Sounds like a very expensive way to achieve something that uh, <clears throat> something that a meal could do. 
Who am I to deny others their gains? The game's dumping these recipes on me now. They must really want me to make these duos. And if there's anything that synergizes with DACA, I'll be all for it. They're good for people that don't have time to make proper meals, though I'd pity such a person. But then I enjoy cooking, so... Who am I to speak? I also do have the time for it. Mm, 100 crack fist. Empty-handed. So we could neglect the guns for the guns. Oh, damage output increased based on movement speed. Do you upgrade? Because our, our uh, movement speed is pretty huge. This could be pretty huge. Give it to me. Up to 20, 30, 40, 50. Yes, absolutely yes. That's just loads of damage united. What did I say I would sacrifice? You, because I don't do axe and hatch thing anymore. Now we just do 50% extra damage ish. Maybe. 22k Warhammer. <laughs> is that a take on gold or is it a take on Warhammer 40k? Massive damage. Hello, gun. Slow. The slow, comma, gun. Fires a widespread of shells, medium range. I'm interested enough to try you. Why did she not cost anything to make? I don't like the lack of range. I wish I had a doll to test this weapon out on. And we're back again to the strange sentient food stuff. So what happened to dealing with the bloody gore stuff? They put together this whole game out of order. On purpose for a laugh. On hard mode, it's still a face roll until you run into the death wall. Then you have to upgrade your build. Then it's face roll again. I see. Millennium 22 and 21, the dark age of technology. I trust C space to know all things machine related. to deny that damage output. But the range. Not to mention that reload time. Oh, <laughs> it might be getting traded in sooner than I thought. My own Flammerwaffen.
that mash to get out of being paralyzed always catches me unaware. Mashing A and D just doesn't feel right. But that's okay, this game is full of things that don't feel right. Center for battle here if I'm so fast that I can avoid them and avoid them I shall. If I truly need their ingredients then there's little stop me coming back here in future. Actually there might be a lack of warp points. I've long thought this game's pacing for upgrades is very strange. There's a glut of them. It's gonna be... You see, after I did the 2023 tier listing of all the games I played that year, now I'm thinking about where to put games on that for the next year's one. This will be a very difficult game to place anywhere. I don't really like it, but... I also really like it. It's got uh, it's got that Nancy Drew danger by design problem. the problem that it exists. <laughs> now, now, young. Can you really criticize the existence of an Nancy Drew before you've done your time in the Nancy Drew mines, which we're all looking forward to? Oh, finally a replacement for the Zippity Zap gun. Burning fuel in Inferno. Yes. Here I thought this would take place of the shotgun, which I am tempted to replace it uh, with the laser rifle again. Actually, this is a good opportunity to do a test of damage output. So this thing seems to do ridiculous damage and doesn't run out of ammo. Look at that lingering burn damage as well, very nice. Shotgun 270, 270, da-da-da, 270, 270, da-da-da-da-da. Now if we had you... There's a DPS counter over on the right and it... It's saying, I think, 195 is what it's capping at with you. The, dam the DPS is not maintained quite as well. Yeah, laser rifle it is. Oh, I can most say <laughs> Nobody tells Young what he can and can't do, especially when it comes to bad-mouthing anyone or anything. He says he's got a New Year's resolution of being nicer, but uh, I seem to have recalled having heard that one before, so I think it's more just a resolution rather than a New Year's one. Wow. Fare thee well, organic matter. Nice to see a return of our durians, though. Rune stone, roasted sweet potato. Actually, did I check for recipes just now? I don't think I did. Well, I'm sure it'll be opportunity once again. was too enamored by checking out DPS. God, the level design in this game seems all over the place. I'm hard pressed to think what they're going for. Let's 
Sweet potato meat. Mm. Sweet potato is... Well, whatever you categorize it as, it's my favorite. It's a tuber. Couldn't call it a vegetable or a fruit. But sweet potatoes are like regular potatoes that have been to the gym. They're so good. I think they're better placed in terms of versatility than the standard potato, even. Young has been a lot nicer to me recently. Uh... Could he not? I don't think people are mean enough to Kaladin. Alright, there we go. Give me the foods. Because this is a great one to find. What else do we have? A scorpion friend! Hmm. Gain a shield layer for every successful dagger attack. I don't have daggers, though. What does the sweet potato do for me? Intestinal contractions enables fart kick. But only when empty-handed. So it seems like there's a specific bill for being empty-handed. With our hundred crack fists and our fart kick. But we're not playing Dungeon Keeper. We're not a bile demon. We're not doing that. This game has been having non stop laughs. Perhaps too many. Actually, I feel bad setting you alight. I want to look at your cool animation. Look at that freaking guy! That is so cool. I must not neglect checking out the developer and uh, the 2D artist or artists behind this game. Wait, that was meant to be a kiwi? Didn't look hairy enough. Don't fear the damage after all, we only get stronger and tankier the more damage we take. All the more for the Flammerwaffen to make its move. You thought it was a potato? Well, we've already encountered potatoes. on sale once for a very low price, like something between 10 and 30 pence each, so I just loaded up and I ate so many pineapples that night and my face was in so much pain the next day. I had underestimated the destructive force of pineapple juice. meat. Rumor had it that cacti control President Cohn. Never eaten cactus. Would like to someday, though. Same could be said about just about anything that I haven't eaten, though. 
I want to be a one-man Noah's Ark. Eat two of every animal on Earth. Kiwi jam sandwich. Molecular level cutting. If you cut at a molecular level, wouldn't that be dangerous? Have you had locust? Uh, I don't think so. I thought I could grab his guns, but sadly no. Tur no, I generally haven't had exotic bugs. Can't imagine their availability being all that high. Not around here, at least. did spy an ice cream maker the other day and thought, should I get one? But it struck me as an appliance that I would probably spend more time cleaning than ever using. Not only that, but ice cream is very readily available and cheap here at Balaton. So I'd probably spend more money on the machine than I ever would just buying them. I struggle to think of having eaten bugs in general. It's not something that's very readily available at all. I've looked at mealworms a fair bit, certainly wouldn't mind eating up a fair few of those. I was thinking about it just earlier today, just imagine if I had a tub of mealworms in the kitchen, I could just feed them my... Uh, my kitchen waste. I had a banana peel earlier. I thought, what if I just fed them the banana peel and then I grab them and eat them? Brilliant. This is an overt Taiwanese reference, says Ninja. Well, please elaborate. It flies over my head. I don't know much about China. Well, not anything that isn't uh, 1444. This is the Sunflower Movement of 2014. Student, why is it always students doing the protesting? Probably because they're so malleable. Yeah, exactly. Too much free time, too impressionable, Hark. Ooh, man, did they have giant bug machines like this at the Sunflower Party? Mmm... Okay. I struggle to get around you and you seem to be immune to my attacks. What if the commander might die? Yeah, there we go. It's kind of high to get high up there. It's kind of hard to get high up though. There we go.
For some reason, I'm having a hard time triple jumping my way up to him. There we go, now I got his number. It's a lot easier than fighting one of Dr. Wily's robots. Too easy. Unprecedented, I think was the achievement's name. You sure it wasn't unprecedented? Game, tell me about my achievements. No, it's unprecedented. Probably a take on unprecedented and president. And though, in case someone asks, I still don't really understand what's going on. And this feels so out of place. We were dealing with this red goo taking over the world and chasing us out, but now it's time to get into weird sentient plant politics again.
Has to happen, doesn't it? They did it in Dragon's Dogma too. I don't think it'll ever not be cringe-worthy to hear title drops. When did that start being a thing? I'm thinking I should try and figure out what's going on in this game, but nothing's coming to me. Looks like we capped out in the recipes though, so are we at the grand finale? Bare fist hits shotguns. Hmm, that is a healthy amount of extra damage. Shield attack, magic damage, this is sorely tempting me, but I really like the range out of this gun, so I'll keep it. Unless... Nope, no unlesses.
I'm unsure what this is meant to be. Is this going to be a defense mode thing? Well, let's find out. No, it is exactly that. Okay, then. Perhaps the flamethrower is not the best choice of attack, then. Toss the food they make into the big walk in the middle. Okay. I did not notice that she was up there this whole time. <laughs> this game really does want to be everything. Surprise hasn't uh, given me a strategy section or an FPS section. I've been thinking why I like the rifle that I have so much, and now it's coming to me. The sound effect it's making is very similar to the Callisto gun from Perfect Dark. Heaven help me for why Perfect Dark is on the mind. That was a great game to run through on mouse and keyboard. Glad to see the weird Ginyu Force creatures back, though. Speaking of Dragon Ball. Thank you. 
I came from your channel, I just finished your 30 plus Frostpunk videos. Okay, well this is a very different experience from Frostpunk, but welcome, asshole. I came hoping that you play the second absolutely. I'm waiting on the Frostpunk 2 release. And when's that coming again? Can't be that long now. June, July. Surely a good year for games. Well, I have several times said I'm a bit worried about what Frostpunk 2 is going to end up being, but think positive. July indeed. I heard some people are going to play this April with the deluxe version. I did pre-order, but I won't play until full release. Really, the deluxe thing gives that much of an early access? Fascinating. Is this game giving us yet another twist? It's been hard enough to follow as it is. I had bubble tea precisely once, and it was vile, disgusting stuff. Didn't give me an experience like this. Also, Rift Research, we're back in Avorion already? Mm. Oh man, Long Dark. Now there's another game I'm looking forward to playing this year. I've already played a lot of it, but I still want to do my proper big run of it. The chef run, but I'm still waiting to hear what's going on with the DLC. So this looks like all the different calamities that happen to Earth. So what's that? Just space membrane thing, collision, split in half like a jawbreaker, realizing you're flat, like in Discworld. Frozen? Well, that's kind of what has happened, right? Turning into a giant scrotum. Yeah, you gotta be ready for anything happening to the world, I suppose.
Okay, the expo dump there help you? Not sure it helped me that much. What is this, just handing me all these awesome looking weapons? Casting black holes, summon demons, firing arrows. Where's my gun, though? These are gun. So I'll leave you be. I'm wondering if there'll be an actual choice here. Not usually fond of those towards the very end of the game. But come on, we gotta go for the good ending if there is such an option. Yield to putrid? Absolutely not. How do we set him on fire? Just joining in, I take it this game is pretty fun. No, fun is a word I would not use to describe this game. It's not very fun, but it's very interesting. Clearly a labor of some love, and I really like the 2D artwork in it. Cool, yeah. Cool, maybe not. But yeah, one of the more genuinely interesting games I've played. Yield to Putrid, still no. Where's my option to kill Putrid? Unless the game has a different idea of yielding to me. Join us. Help us regain justice and peace of mind. I'm burning this whole place down, if you don't mind. Submission is not humiliation. You'll protect the ones you love and fulfill destiny. Hmm. Do I need to ride you out of here? That 
it seems to have achieved little. Mm. I seem to be able to land on that hand. No, I must have imagined that. But I can't slide up here. What am I missing here? Unless Yield to Putrid is just some very poor naming. Also, I don't see Simmer. Where's Simmer hiding in all of this? but I refuse to give in there. Maybe if we go all the way back to the start. Yeah, see, there you are, Simmer. No, you're just giving me all the intro. Oh, good, everyone's all right. Oh, nice. There's our introduction to the ice cream. Okay, maybe it was too much to hope that coming back here would shed some light. Anybody know what to do here? Or am I meant to submit? Is it one of those but thou must moments? Bend the knee. Oh, I guess I've got no choice. Let's get bending. Oh, Selectum, I don't think anyone here understands this game yet. I certainly don't. It's a very strange game. Nothing makes much sense, or perhaps even any sense. I thought it, I really thought when I picked this up it would be some kind of happy-go-lucky game about cooking. Something maybe Dungeon mashy like Instead, it has just been a bit of a fever dream from start to finish. And gameplay-wise, it's been all over the place. So the mood's, the mood's been shifting back and forth. Like we're jumping between fifth gear and reverse. And the game's kind of been all over the place as well. A very light Metroidvania. 
has its fair share of, fair share of uh, bullet hells going on as well. Feels very hard to move around in this level or this arena. Probably because I'm constantly floating down. Dungeon Meshi had some powerful moments. Yeah, one of the best things I've read ever, I'd say. Extremely visually appealing as well. Better than Therme Roma? Yeah, better than Therme Roma. And yeah, Dungeon Meshi is finished. Well, I think it's finished. Some supplementary material would certainly be welcome. It's done a lot of world building, creating a world that I'd like to know more about. Be a lot more tolerable but I can actually get some height but it feels like I'm fighting not even in water it feels like I'm fighting in molasses your movement in water in this game isn't that impaired she finished the manga so she can play Baldur's Gate 3 in peace and quiet I remember hearing that She's too absorbed in playing Baldur's Gate to work on her manga. I can get behind that. I wonder if she plays... What's her name again? Kui, I think? I wonder if she plays uh, Dragon's Dogma. I feel like that would be right for her. I wonder if we're going to be stuck in that Everhood situation where the game just doesn't want to end. This fight is already overstayed its welcome. hearing those mangaka little stories of like, yeah, I was meant to be working, but, you know, I was playing this game or reading this other stuff or just generally doing something other than drawing. Amuses me greatly. fight really is where fun goes to die in this game. Come on.
What is this? Am I meant to be closing these? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm punching now, I think. Okay. But I, I, I can't reach what's at the bottom there. going on obvious finger pointing up to the top right. Moving up there is proving difficult. Everything's proving difficult. Okay, I said the last boss is where fun goes to die. I take it back. There was still a little bit of fun left to destroy here. What the- oh, I missed this whole thing. I was talking about loadouts and I didn't even touch it. Yeah, Hi-Fi Panda, that would be a difficult one. Been a lot of games with god-awful endings and final boss fights. How about good old Final Fantasy IX? I actually quite liked FF10's final fight in Kino. Do you mean Braska's final Aeon, or you Yevon, or both?
Like a rat in a maze without any cheese, I am lost. Been lost this whole game. Perhaps now things will explain themselves. So we must have been that unknown character that we saw in the little rift crystal -y things. Here are our necromancers serving us up food with their forbidden techniques. How dare they eat something that isn't the people nutrient cake.
Well, Majaja, I will look forward to future projects, because whilst I don't really like this game... No, that's not fair. I don't enjoy playing this game. I do like it a lot. Alright, epilogue me, and let's finish this up.
Oh, you're spot on, Boomer. Even the soft music is just here to just doze me off. I still want to know why everything became sentient. <laughs> Look at that, the peas are sentient, even the pod itself is sentient. What does it all mean? I was told that it would be explained at some point. It's possible that it was, and it just went right over my head. Ah, oh, that pumpkin's having a blast over there, at least. Oh yeah, Rizla. Right. Every day I'm grateful I'm not playing more of this war is uh, this war of mine. Then again, maybe if I knew the systems of the game inside out, I would enjoy it more. Ah, but the gameplay is kind of garbage. It's no Frostpunk, that's for sure. Question is, will Frostpunk 2 be much of a Frostpunk? You considered putting in a weekly one-shot for it, but then you played through it and fought better. It did lend itself to a nice hidden rule that every person to talk about Frostpunk 2 would subtract 10 minutes from the plate. Oh wow. A negative time weekly one-shot. I assume you were talking about this war of mine there. A game I'd much rather not talk about again. Whilst we could go back to any point in this game ever again, let's just never. Thank you for playing. Here you so don't tell me. Ow. <laughs> Maybe that flamethrower was really doing some work. I feel bad for people who have left the stream on in the background, gone off to cook dinner or whatever, and it's making this din. Okay, G oh, no, no, no. <laughs> there we go. Whew. I could click through. I didn't want to see it increment up to 20,000 there. All right, start new game plus with stronger enemies and more insight on a new save slot, I guess. Hey, back to the start. We've got all our upgrades, I assume. Yeah, looks like it. Did I miss two, or are these just intentionally left blank? Perhaps I'll never know. Because I'm certainly not playing this again. Again, I did not really enjoy playing this game. What was it really trying to be? I guess it was trying to be its own thing, just by being a lot of other things. Is it a Metroidvania? Is it just a weird story game? Is it meant to make you think, laugh, cry? I don't know. 
Things looked really promising at the end of chapter one. I thought the game was going to take a, a turn, but it didn't really. Yeah. That said, I don't dislike this game. It's maybe not for me, but it was very interesting and it looked gorgeous. So I'll definitely be checking out what else the developers have put out or what else they will be putting out. But that's it for the Dungeon Munch's long play. I got one more left on the five long plays that I just forced in myself because I can do things like that. It's Void Stranger. It seemed the least anticipated out of all the five. A Sokuban game. But much like Dungeon Munch's here, it looked interesting and that was good enough for me. So we'll be biting into that one, most likely tomorrow. I don't know, pretty close to the end of Dragon's Dogma 2. Well, we'll see how much of my life that continues to take over. But until I am back with whatever else, it is a cheers and a cheerio.